Hello, good morning, buenos dias. <laughs> I bought a package, I bought a plant that has a package. I bought a plant package and I wanted to open it on here with you, but I also wanna show you the process of what I do when I get you plants. So I'll take you along the whole thing. I don't mess with my plants very much unless one, it's a rescue. Uh, two, I've, I'm just showing you something for filming purposes but aside from that or if there's like an infestation or something like that which I don't come across often <laughs> but I wanted to start with we're going to open this package up and then the journey along the way so I hope this is helpful to you with your plant babies and first things first let's get to what's inside as always, I have my trusty helper, BDB, Mr. Pops. So this is a package that I ordered from online. I don't, um, I get asked where do I purchase my plants from. Anywhere that has plants, I'm buying them. So I will buy from grocery stores, from my local nursery, any plant stores that I come across. Um, I am very picky when it comes to online shipping and plants because one that's there's a lot involved when it comes to getting plants shipped to you and so you want to make sure that you're receiving you know something that's been shipped well so I have I'll put in the description some of my favorite plant sellers and I've met personally and I also continue to purchase and I've purchased from them for years. This one I received yesterday. This one is from uh, Dade Plant Co. It is a shop online. They're located in Florida and their shipping is just always amazing. You want to sniff? Pablo just, he gives a sniff test. He checks it out. And I do keep the polyfill. I use it if I ship plants out or any additional projects. So I just put that to the side. This one is in a hanging basket or it can be. So they included the clip there, or the hanger. And this is what it looks like. Just beautiful. Purchased during the winter time and I usually get heat packs or they'll include them in there and so I have yet to have a plant that gets withered from them because of weather so it's actually attached inside the box do you see that so I gotta cut that off that just keeps it in place it can be kind of difficult to get it out but I would rather have a little difficulty getting it out and then for it to be flinging around the box. <laughs> Nothing like a plant package to get me through this gloomy day. So I ordered a Hoya Kadada Sumatra. I had to think about it, I forgot. Yay, she's so beautiful. She's a queen. She's so sweet and fuzzy, and he just sniffs it. Give it a one, two sniff, make sure we're all doing good. And that's about it. This one comes very nicely wrapped. So I have had amazing experiences with not only the shipping, but with, the, like with pests. But that doesn't mean that it, it can't happen, right? So I try to be as careful as I can. I also try to use as little pesticides as possible. I find that if I'm on top of my plant care, then my plants remain healthy. Not saying that I don't ever have pest issues because I've shown them on here before that you know, I've had pests, 
We all have had pests if we have plants. But I try to go the more all natural route, especially because during the spring and the, and the summer, I take some of my plants outside. And if I'm using a I heard something, <laughs> I heard like a clicking sound, like what is that? Um, so yeah, if I get them outside and, and, uh, and if I've used a pesticide that is harmful to pollinators, then um, I, I don't wanna do that. So I try to avoid it as much as possible. I use uh, diatomaceous earth has been something I've been using for, for a little over a year now worked well. Um, I use a horticultural oil that's worked well or I just give a good hose down of a plant if it needs it and then um, if all else fails and it's just bad I'm thinking like thrips. Thrips are the absolute worst in my opinion and so sometimes the all natural route just it just doesn't do it then I'll go in with a systemic but I try my hardest not to right now it is it was wrapped in the plastic it also has the moss over the top just to keep it damp during the travels and so what I do and what you would do is you remove the wrapping take out the sphagnum moss then you can kind of decide what to do so now thinking about your plant and all that it's been through, it's been through all its travels between shipping and between the seller and what it went through there, the, the distributor, all the things, right? It's been all over the place. I try my best to leave it alone. So I'll start with just a little check to make sure I don't see any anything to the naked eye. It doesn't mean there's nothing there, but I do like to give it a once over and see. Am I, okay. am I the only one that sniffs my plants? I wanna know, <laughs> I wanna know what, what it smells like. I'm a, my eyesight is not the greatest, and so I think my, I go with the next best thing, and that's my, my nose. And so my nose tells me a lot about a plant and its state. <laughs> I've got nothing that is mushy or nothing that's falling off. We have nothing to the naked eye, no pests on the undersides that I can see. Not saying they're not there, but I don't see anything right off the bat. But I did check, but I can feel the pot is pretty light, so that tells me that it's, it's dry and then the way that I check to see if my plants need watered or not is just with some kind of soil probe. Uh, for me, it could be a knitting needle. Um, I have skewer sticks that I use, or I get this one from um, when I order my bonsai gravel. This actually comes in it, which is actually really nice. And so I just take it all the way to the bottom. And if it comes out dry, which it is, then it tells me that it needs to be dry. And if it's still damp, then I know that we're good. Now, depending on the plant, you may find like a peace lily, for example, that doesn't want to completely dry out. Then you can kind of tell if you put it halfway down, you can see, oh, okay, that's still damp if I put it halfway. So this girl, she's pretty dry, so I'm gonna take her and give her a good watering. So here in the corner of just my guest room, I just have my little setup. So this was actually from another plant package. I just reused it just so that it wouldn't be sitting the water like a wet pot directly on this. So I am reusing this mat here and then I'm just using a timer for a grow light. I don't have a good amount of light that hits this corner here. So I just plug in whatever grow light that I have and this is what I call like the isolation corner. And so this again is just, 
Yes. Am I extra? Yes. I don't know how many houseplants I have at this point anymore, but for me to get some kind of pest in infestation, it's, it feels like it's very stressful. So I would rather take the extra precautions to avoid the pests as much as possible. So yeah, it is extra, but that's what's, what's helped me. So I would much rather do this step than to rush and have a pest outbreak and then I get upset and want to toss my whole plant collection away. And give a hose down. I get in there. I drown him. If you've been here long enough, you know I, I drown that hose. <laughs> and I'll give her some time and I'll let her drain in here. And then I'll be back. And then I just stare at her for the next two hours. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I just let it sit and acclimate. And I'll check back in tomorrow. Okay, here we are. So at this point now, I like to clean the leaves and inspect it again if I need to. If your plant is unhealthy, you're going to get more pests. And so if I am on top of my plant game, I am taking care of them as they should be. I'm pruning them, they're getting watered uh, when they should be, then I'm not dealing with pests so much. But when I start to forget about them, then I notice that things start to happen. So uh, as far as like eradicating them, I don't until I need to. Does that make sense? But I still want to be super aware. And so that's why for me, the isolation period is very important. Uh, in the meantime, I do like to clean the leaves because I want for those sun rays, or in my case, the girl light, to get to those leaves to continue to help the plant grow and photosynthesize as it should. So I usually just make a homemade leaf cleaner. This is Castile soap mixed with water. I wanna make sure that I get this right because I set it too fast once and I set it the opposite way. So I use four parts water, one part Castile soap. So it looks like this. I'm always on the market and I'm always trying out new leaf cleaners. Hi. <laughs> I'm always trying out new leaf cleaners and I have yet to find one that I enjoy, that I enjoy the smell, that I enjoy, you know, its product. Um, I've had some that they want you to, like you have to mix everything together. And there was one that I had and it, it melted through the container. I guess it was so potent and it melted through the container and that ended up staying on my carpet. I had to do like a whole carpet clean. It was a mess. So to, I'm very picky with my leaf cleaners. <laughs> so that's why I've just continued to use mine that I make, but I'm actually gonna try this one. This is the first time that I've tried it. So I will keep you posted, but this one was sent to me. Um, it's the Leaf Radiance Leaf Shine Spray. It looks like this. So it says shake well before use. Watch your noses. Watch your noses. It smells very important to me. <laughs> this doesn't smell bad. Okay. That's good. That's good stuff. And then I just go through and do a little wipe down. Now, do I do this every time? I really try my best. Have there been times that I'm super excited and I want to get them with my other plants? Yes. But that's just, that is the, like if something happens and there's an outbreak, then there is no one else to blame but myself. 
this Hoya has some really, like you can't tell, but this Hoya actually has some quite fuzzy leaves. And this one more than likely will be going in my cabinet. Um, I've, I've seen some great blooms off of this one. Not this one, but I've seen people that have had it that have had some amazing blooms. And uh, these do like a little higher humidity. I do not have high humidity in my home other than my cabinet. So I will be putting it in my, my grow cabinet. And if you are trying to make your own, I do have a video on that. So I will link that here. As far as repotting, I don't know if I mentioned this, but as far as repotting, I leave it, I leave it in the medium that it's left in. Unless the seller tells me that it's so root bound, because I've had that before where I, where I order and they'll say, hey, just a heads up, it's very root bound just when you get it um, potted up and you get a chance. And I do. Or if I see, like I had ordered a begonia and oh my gosh, I saw that that soil was so dense and it was so, it just stayed wet and I'm like, I, I got to change it. And so I did. But most of the time I actually leave it in the medium that it comes in until it needs it. Either the, like the soil medium or the soil will be hard um, and I can see that there's no water retention in it or... Again, if I have a rescue plant, most of the times if you see me doing a rescue, I do remove it from the pot in the soil because there's a reason that it's struggling. So I want to see down below and check those roots to make sure that there's nothing un uh, underneath that I have to attend to. A lot of times those plants either have um, root rot or they've been severely dehydrated and the roots tell a story. So I just follow them in their stories. Undersize is very important too when you're cleaning your leaves, not just the front, but the undersides and the stems. Water, Castile soap, coconut, coconut, coconut oil, MCT, bamboo extract, jojoba oil, peppermint oil, I smell the peppermint oil, rosemary oil, black pepper oil, neem, and aloe. And I like that it's ready to go. Like I, I didn't have to mix anything. Okay, that's nice. I like it so far. And there she is. Doesn't fit in here, but here's an example of my little snail. But I could put her in a cute little cover pot. Um, I could already start to incorporate a trellis like this. I just had this acrylic trellis and I could start to get her on the trellis as so. I have I gotta do more to this, but I'll stare at her for the next couple weeks and then transition her to her forever home. I just wanted to share a quick little something on what I do and it doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be so complex. I wanted something just simple and easy and you don't have to feel overwhelmed about what you're doing with your plants. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here so much and I will see you here in the next one. Bye.